but hand out free business cards and say, hey, uh, call these guys and shop. They don't want to do that. They want yeah. you to help them. They want guidance. You don't go to your doctor and say, oh, man, my chest has been bothering me. And he's yeah, it could be this or that. Here, let me give you the choice. Do you, you could have these three different drugs. Which one do you think would be best for you? No, you want him to say, oh, yeah, I know right with that. Here's the, here's yeah. the one that'll fix it. And I don't see agents doing that like they could. Welcome back to another episode of the Agent Launch Podcast. My name is Nathan Conant, and my honored guest today is Rick Johnson. He's a mortgage broker as well as a real estate agent who does business all throughout the beautiful state of California. He's based out of El Dorado Hills. Welcome, Rick. Thank you, Nathan. Honored to be here. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Now, our, our typically our audience is realtors. You're both a realtor and a loan originator. This, how did you, how did you say in my mind, you know what? I've got a good idea. This isn't crazy. Let me do both of these jobs. <laughs> well, a lot of agents uh, are agents because they are hitting a second phase in their life, yeah. and they're trying it for the first time, and a lot mm. of them fail. Mm. And uh, a lot of them just don't do that great of a job. There are some true professionals out there that are wonderful, but a lot of them are really not that sharp. I had some friends that were moving back to California from Arizona. And they called me up and they said, hey, Rick, can you help us? And I said, absolutely. Uh, Take their information, get them pre-approved. They said, well, can you help us find a house? And I go, well, yeah, I'm a licensed agent, but I've never really used that part of my business. But yeah, I'll sign up for MetroList and I'll sign up and get a lockbox key and, and all of that. Um, yeah, sure. So I helped them. Um, it was super easy. It wasn't that much more difficult than just doing the loan. Yeah. And when I got my paycheck, I said, wow, that's a nice difference. <laughs> Why don't I do that again? Uh, and so that's how it got started. Uh, we're both an independent mortgage broker and real estate agency, both. Got it. Uh, in this business, we had to be licensed as originally a real estate agent. And then when the NMLS came out, we had to add that license. So I've had the real estate license for 15 years. I just didn't start using it until about five years ago. Okay. I got you. Would you recommend to somebody else? I mean, what does it take to be able to do both? Um, obviously, some some professionalism it's, is I'm hearing, but would you recommend to anybody else? Yeah, do what I did. Yeah, it's it's a challenge. Uh, the the knowledge level is just incredible. Uh, it's usually easier to stay in one lane or the other. Yeah, uh, but in so. our office, we have about four of us that do both. Okay, one cool. of them, you know, started out as a lender. Then he started doing both, and now he switched over to real estate, and he closed $52 million worth of real estate last year. Yeah. Um, through, I'd say he found his groove. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, it sounds he, like he that focus. Strictly, yeah, he found the groove. Real estate that, for him. That's right. That's right. Hey, you've got, you've got a sign behind you that I can read. It says, my goal is to create a life I don't need a vacation from. What does that mean to you? Why do you have that on your wall? Hey, a lot of guys are working 60, 70 hours a week. And in my younger days, I did and I missed a lot. Mm. And now um, I like to enjoy life. I like to spend time with the family, with the grandkids. Uh, we have grandkids in San Diego. So we are frequent flyers about every six weeks. We're down there for a long weekend. Um, right. I don't need to take a vacation. My life is now fun. Yeah, no, and that's good. I'm old enough. You can tell by the lack of hair and the gray hair. I don't <laughs> work with people I don't like. Um, That's a great place to be at. Mean and nasty. I mean, honestly, I'll try to help anybody through a problem. But if they're disrespectful, if they're mean, if they're nasty, if they're not respectful of time. Yeah. I'm sorry. We're probably not a good fit. That's right. That's right. Now, for the younger agent that's listening to this and going, oh, man, I would love it if I could just work with 10 great people every month rather than fishing through 100 crazy Zillow leads every month. You know what I mean? What would you tell them have been some of the internal characteristics you've had to develop in yourself and external tools you've had to use to get to that point? Because that's my understanding of your business is 
10 right. great people a month is a better business yep. for you than a billion leads. Thank you, Nathan. Yeah, good, good point. So I study an hour a day. Okay. Uh, I'm part of the coaching group that I pay a fortune for. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I listen to a lot of podcasts from successful people who have paved the path yeah. and have already been there and done that. Right. So I don't need to reinvent the wheel. If I do what they did to become successful, then I will also naturally get that success. The one advice, though, that I would give that if I could go back and start over again, yeah, yeah, would be number one, create a better database. Okay. Um, I have a huge database, but I haven't done as good a job as I should have or could have on following up and staying in touch. Okay. Yeah, I send a birthday email. Yeah, I send something out periodically on a drip program, but to actually pick up the phone and have that conversation or to physically get some kind of a mailer in their hand once a month, I haven't done as good as I could have. And if you would do that and stay in touch, the business will just blossom and grow. That was yeah. that was probably the biggest thing that I, if I could do it over again, I yeah. would do a lot differently. I'm reading between the lines of what you're saying there, but what I'm what I'm hearing you say is a physical thing and a person to person call is more valuable yep. than an email in today's uh, today's marketplace. Nobody reads noisy email anymore. Exactly, Nathan. I've got. Uh, I subscribe to BombBomb and I send out video emails and yeah. it cracks your open rates. And even with the video and even with maybe something like holding up a nice sign that you know says happy birthday or something, the open rate is unbelievably low. And with just an email only, the, the, the open rate is super, super low. Uh, yeah, I personally get 500 emails a day, even though I unsubscribe and delete and block. Oh, uh, God. Yeah, I just click, 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 delete, 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 delete. And so everybody is busy nowadays. And if we can find a way to connect with them in a different medium, if they're working from home, most everybody's going to pick up the phone right now. Right. Um, right. They're not going to look at your email and read, you know, 20 paragraphs of content. Yes, yes. But they will pick up the thought. Okay, so I mean... And the other thing is get help. Get help? If, if, if going back, um, get help both in form of coaching and training. Yeah. And then physically get an assistant as soon as you possibly can. Okay. Um, one of the things is, you know, if you look at a, a piece of pie, you know, those are all the items that have to get done. Right. But if you cut off a little sliver, one piece, yeah, that represents your highest impact, your highest uh, income generating activities. Right. So all the rest is just stuff that has to get done. But if you can focus on those high producing income generating activities, yes, and hire somebody else to do all the 12, 15, 17 dollar an hour work. Yep. You can then focus on the five, six, seven hundred dollar an hour work and explode your income while decreasing your stress and the amount of hours that you work. I love that. And I hope our audience could hear that. I'm going to have you say it in a slightly different way in a second. But what my imagination is saying is, or what, is, what I'm hearing is, get an assistant to do email, scheduling, closing paperwork. You focus on your prospecting calls and listing meetings, something like that. Exactly. Is that is that what you're talking about? Exactly right. Um, and don't try to get busy doing Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and you know reading emails. That's not productive. What's productive is getting belly to belly or on the phone or with a Zoom meeting with somebody who wants to buy or sell a house. Yeah. And if you're not doing that. Yeah, that's not an income producing activity. Now, I do have a funny story that yeah. if you don't mind, I'd love Please. to share it because it's just so comical. So <laughs> no matter where you stand on the political divide, yeah, I had posted some information and I got into a fight on Facebook yeah. with somebody who was kind of a troll. And my friends jump in with my point of view and back me up. And my son <laughs> jumps in with my point of view and backs me up. 
Yeah. And then finally I said, you know what? We have to agree to disagree and still be friends. And a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. <laughs> However, with interest rates being the lowest ever in history, can I help you with a refinance? And I was just kind of being snarky. He comes back and says, yeah, can I call you tomorrow? <laughs> I am now doing his refinance right now as we speak. And so, I mean, it's like, thank you, God. I mean, who would have thought? You know, but I just thought that was such a fun story. So you've heard it. You've heard it here first from Rick Johnson. Uh, go ahead and get into political arguments with people, just as long as you end them with a call to action to do business with you. Well, you know, it's somebody that's known me for years, and he says, you know, it's it's interesting. In sales, never stop closing. Always look for the opportunity. And right now, interest rates are the lowest ever in history. So about 80% of everybody out there could benefit from a refinance, even if they just refinanced six months ago. And so right. I said, right. hey, let's take a chance, maybe. You know? Well, that, that's good. I mean, I'll hi the, highlight that a little bit more. If the, I mean, You can serve anybody's mortgage in anywhere in California, right? Correct. Right. So yes. It doesn't matter if they're in San, San Diego or San Francisco. Uh, reach out to Rick. Uh, there's your call to action right now, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, nowadays, everything is over the Internet or over the phone, you know, emailing docs and stuff back and forth. So and with COVID now, I can't meet with people face to face. We can do a right. Zoom meeting. Uh, right. You know, but we're not supposed to. Uh, right. Meet face to face in our right. area. Hey, let, let's let's talk a little bit more about the confluence between real, realtors and mortgage brokers. Like, since you're on both sides of the coin, what one practical thing can a realtor who's listening to this right now do to improve their chances of having a great, great, fruitful, long-term relationship with a mortgage broker? That's a great question, Nathan. So a lot of times that I find agents don't appreciate the relationship and how a good mortgage person, be it a broker or a loan officer, can help you build your business. Okay. Uh, for the first 10 years of my life, I handed out all kinds of business to agents that were family, that were friends, that somehow one of my clients that I did loans for was now looking to buy a house and their agent had retired or gotten out of the business or God forbid died. Um, or I couldn't remember who they were. That was a real travesty. I had it in my notes and I would then tell them who their agent was and reach out. But, you know, sometimes I would just send the deal and I never got the return reciprocal relationship where it was us doing business together as a team. Mm. It was like, yeah, I'm going to throw you a bone, so to right. speak. Right. Instead of we're a partnership how can I help you? I'll okay. give you an example of that. Uh, our local real estate group, the El Dorado County Association of Realtors, had regular weekly tours. And I'd go on the tours as a lender to visit with some of the agents. And occasionally I would find a house that this is going to be a problem doing a loan on this house. Oh. You've got a deck that's totally rotted out. You've got this problem. You've got that problem you got to market this house a little differently as a fixer with an FHA 203k loan yeah, or with a Fannie Mae home style renovation loan. Mm -hmm. And here's what the numbers might look like on that. Right. Or here's this tore up, beat up house. Let's get some costs of what it would take to redo the kitchen. Let's take some costs of what it might take to redo the bathrooms. And then let's show them some pictures. Here's, you know, kind of a dream book of what it could be. And here's what that might look like if we put it in paper and help market the house and get it sold quickly. Uh, just that partnership or knowing different loan programs. So, for example, we're in El Dorado County. Right. About 90% of El Dorado County qualifies for a USDA loan. Okay. USDA is zero money down. Oh. And a super low interest rate. Wow. Well, if you're marketing a house that's 
300,000, 350,000 in our area, that's going to be a first time home buyer house. To let them know they could get in with zero down and have an interest rate, you know, that's super low. It's huge, but they don't ever think to try to put together something. So I came up with a three payment option flyer for them. So you as the agent do the front with your about how wonderful your house is. And then on the back, I'll take and do three different loan programs that would fit that house. Now they can see, do I qualify? Do I make enough money? You know, can I do this and help market it better? Is it kind of a cheat sheet? Um, quick, like a quick glance, but specific to that property? Is that what you're talking about? It's specific to that property, but I mean, it tells you the base payment, the property taxes, if there's a homeowners association, what the insurance is, what the mortgage insurance is, how much the total payment is, how much the total cash out of pocket, how much you need to make to qualify. Interesting. Uh, just the whole breakdown. Yeah. It just makes it so much easier. No, that makes a ton of sense. That's a great idea. And if you're listening and not watching, this would maybe be something, I mean, is that something you'd be willing to share with any of our audience members, just even an, an outline or sample so that yeah, they can, sure. that'd be awesome. They, I, what I think about what that reminds me of is like a tech company where the salesperson on the phone is, is like the realtor and they make these promises to the person, this software is going to change your life. Right. And they might not realize till the point that the person who's actually got to deliver the solution of the software. Oh no, it actually can't do that. You know what I mean? Or, and so right. you're, what you're describing to me is making sure that the partnership between the realtor and the mortgage broker are so aligned that they can, they can get each other's back. They, they're not overselling or underselling what either of them can do. That's exactly it. But then also um, setting the person up properly. Uh, if I'm dealing with a client that I was referring to another agent, I would build them up. Hey, this is Debbie. I've worked with her for years. She's a great agent. I think you'll like her a lot. If for any reason there's a problem, though, you guys just don't click, please let me know. I, I know other people, but that's the one I think you should reach out to. And same for lending. Hey, I think you should call Rick. He's the go-to guy. Uh, my clients love him. If for some reason you guys don't hit it off, he's kind of a crotchety old fart sometimes. <laughs> you know, give me a call and get you somebody else. You know, <laughs> a little humor. Yeah. But, um, you know, but to hand out three business cards and say, hey, uh, call these guys and shop, they don't want to do that. They want yeah. you to help them. They want guidance. You don't go to your doctor and say, oh man, my chest has been bothering me. And he's like, yeah, it could be this or that. Here, let me give you the choice. Do you, you could have these three different drugs. Which one do you think would be best for you? Uh, no, you want him to say, oh, yeah, I know right with that. Here's the, here's the one that'll fix it. Yeah. Um, and I don't see agents doing that like they could. Okay. And I don't okay. see the closeness of relationship like they could. It, it, yeah, that's how I'm interpreting it. Like the idea that's coming to my mind is invest in that relationship in a deeper way, get some lunch and put some strategy together. Like what you're describing there with, I'm picturing that they would have to print that, that, that little handout that you're talking would have to be like the sure. backside of a piece of paper where they're printing their listing information, yeah, like exactly. on, a, on a, on a yard flyer. Right. So basically you really have to get that from you and print their stuff on the other side. Is that, am I getting it right? Yeah, exactly. So just, Hey, you know, tell your lender, yeah. Hey, I just got this new listing. It's, yes this address at this price, yeah. what would be the best yeah. loan options? Cool. They can put it together and get it to you and you could then get it to your printer. Now front and back is both used. So you don't have 50% of your flyer space blank paper. I love that. And I'm, off, I'm often list, looking for those, yeah, little, those little hacks because what, what I think we are as individual producers in, in real estate or mortgage is we're like, we're like these small size sharks. We're aggressive. We've got good ideas, but then we've got the the Zillows and whatnot. They're these trolling nets. They're trying to catch it all, right? And and right. almost put us out of business in a sense. But if we can have really good tactics, we can actually swim between the chinks in the net, and 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 still grow our businesses ethically the way we want them to. Serve ten great people every, every month. Um, and so what you're describing there to me is kind of like one of those ways to stand out from the crowd, um, and. And it's super client facing too, isn't it? Because it really provides it a service for them. 
Well, that's the whole thing. We have to do what's best for the client and help them. And they're scared. It's the biggest purchase of their life for most people. And they don't do it very often. And so they don't know exactly the steps that have to happen and what has to take place. And, and it's just about teamwork and working together. And if the loan is going to close a day or two late because the client didn't provide the right stuff or because like for the month of December, lenders got in as much business in the month of December as they normally do in an entire nine month period. So imagine how the systems got tweaked. They were busting at the seams. Appraisals were taking longer. Home inspections were taking longer. Lenders were taking longer. If it closes a day or two late, it's not my fault. I'm going to do everything I can to get it done, but I can't control the volume of business that came in at XYZ lender. We have about 25 different lenders that we go to yeah. and some of them take as long as two months to close i've got another one that i can close any deal in 15 days right is the rate going to be the absolute lowest maybe not it's going to be good but not the very lowest okay um, are they going to take the edgy deals that need more work no those are going to take longer um, so just setting the right expectation to the other thing that I see agents do all the time that I kind of have an issue with is they let the client run their schedule and just they're running out weekends showing five, six, eight homes and Saturday and Sunday and then the next week. And then they're taking a breather and the guy just drives by an open house and sees it and goes in and makes an offer and, and they get cut out. Um, setting the right expectation and the right communication with the client is so critical. Okay. How do they, Another. how do they prevent that? Is it bringing them into the office, signing paperwork, being more professional, not being so re reactive? What, what are the ways that they can tactically deal with that? Because I feel the pain of what you're describing there. So what I do, you know, I, I'm also an agent, right? And so what I'll do is I'll set them up a search in our local, you know, MLS, which is yep. called Metrolist. Yep. And I said, look, nowadays with the internet, you can see everything. You can research the area, you can do a Google Earth and you can see the house from in the air and zoom down into the neighborhood. Do a little research online and when you narrow it down to what you like, call me. I'll get you more info, we'll go see it. And if you like it, we'll make an offer. But I'm not gonna put you in my car on the weekend and show you five houses on Saturday and six houses on Sunday because you'll be totally confused and overwhelmed you won't remember all the details about which house was which. And, and I'm not gonna take you out at eight o'clock at night when it's dark out, because then you can't see the house. So kind of like a doctor appointment, we're gonna make this fit within a time frame of business hours. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I work it. And I've never had any kickback. Uh, you know, They respect the professionalism and putting boundaries on them. Yeah, yeah, I love that. So I'm, I'm what I'm picking up on that is, um, it, did you take it as far as this? Do you say these are the hours of the week that I have available to take you to those to those listings? Would you like to book a couple hours on Thursday from three to five? Is that how you do it? Or yeah, I mean it's a little more spontaneous and, and I'm a lot more flexible. But um, you know, like we find the right house. Okay, let's get in there right now because in our market we're having multiple offers yeah and it'll be sold in a day uh, if it's a nice house priced right um, I had one listing that I recently sold that all the comps indicated the value was about 365 mm -hmm. we listed it but it, it was super super clean I mean you could eat off the floors these folks <laughs> took excellent care of it uh, we listed at 365. We had 18 showings in the first couple of days at four offers and it sold for 30,000 over asking price. And they were thrilled to get it and let them stay in it an extra month after closing. Yeah. I mean, the market is crazy right now. It's just setting the right expectation. And then also having a life balance for yourself that you're not working every night and weekend and losing your family while you're chasing success. 
So do you think that having that philosophy has caused you to lose deals in the past? I'm not a perfect fit for everybody. Yeah. But then who is? You're, you're always going to find people that love you to death and yeah. will do business over and over. Yeah. And you're always going to find people that you don't quite gel with. And so yeah. let's just get it out up front. I just closed three transactions this month that were the third or fourth transaction with the same client for each of those three. Um, right. I've taken good care of them. They like me and trust me. Yep. I've stayed in touch with them. I'll call them on their birthday. Um, I, I've never pressured them, but yeah. just, hey, rates have hit the lowest ever. I think it might be worth taking a peek to see if we can save you some money. Yes. Are you interested? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yep. And it will totally. close. And, 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 and that's really good because a, the young agent or the new agent that's just getting into this industry needs to hear that and needs to have something like that to aim at. I, I can hear the cynicism of some of them saying, hey, I don't have any deal ready to go for next month. Yeah, great. Good for you to, to close three. However, I've got to, I'm going to run around because I'm trying to close these. So maybe, maybe what they could take from that and tell me if you disagree with this is that may be how you feel right now but aim for something that's going to make you happy. And what you're describing is happy clients that do more than one transaction with you that understand your professionalism and understand like your healthy business boundaries that you've set up for them and they will keep coming back. And so letting go of some of that anxiety, if you are newer try and you are finding yourself running around at 8 PM at night and going, what kind of business do you actually want to build and be proactive towards that rather than just reactive? That and then track all of your data. And that's something that I have not done a great job at. So I am uh, preaching to the choir here. I, sure. I have not, but measure your leads. You know, mm. how many leads do you have coming in? Where did they come from? Yeah. What other sources are out there that maybe you could find some business? Um, and then of those leads, how many actual conversations did you have? And yeah. if you get a lead, follow it up immediately because the longer you wait, the lesser the chance of closing it. Right. And then get them pre-approved with your lender as quickly as possible. If uh, if you know what their price range is, then you can better help them to find that within the price range. But if they don't know, they might be looking at something they can't afford or they don't realize that they could afford something much better and you could help them. I had one that thought she could only afford a $75,000 condo. And this goes back several years when those actually existed. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, and, that sounds interesting. And, and running the numbers, I said, well, you know, you actually qualify for a whole lot more. Okay. And a condo has a high homeowners association. If we put you into a house that didn't have a homeowners association, you could buy this much house. Right. And she's like, oh my goodness, I had no idea. Well, she bought that house. Now fast forward three years, four, five years, I guess it's been, uh, now is married, now with two kids, and now is busting at the seams and ready to move out of that house and upgrade. But it made them a much better uh, living situation. And for the agent, instead of a $75,000 condo, it was a $200,000 house. Yeah. And the sale, look at the difference in your commission. You're helping somebody, but you're getting paid more than twice as much right. as you would have just by doing a little bit of investigative work with the lender. Love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I'm taking away from this. If, if you're an agent or a mortgage broker, wherever you are, take your favorite mortgage broker or, or agent out for lunch and have these real meaningful conversations and set up some simple algorithms or systems that, that you can live by where you can serve each other. If you agree that, you know, serving each other and bringing value to each other is an important part of your business, take, take a couple of them out uh, for lunch or drinks and, and talk this stuff out. Uh, that's, that's what I'm taking from this. You, yep, that's right. Good stuff. Awesome. Rick, uh, if somebody's out there in California and they're hearing this and they either need a, a mortgage broker or a realtor, how, they, how can they get a hold of you? How can you help them? I always use my middle initial because I have such a common name. So it's Rick R. Johnson. Yeah. Um, yeah. So 
I just use that. And then uh, email is rick at rj4loans.com. That's the number four yes. loans, L-O-A-N-S, rick at rj4loans.com. And, or you can reach me on any of the social media platforms, LinkedIn, Facebook, et cetera. Um, awesome. I'm out there. Uh, awesome. Yeah, I'd love to help if there's anything I could do or just answer a question or share some data. Absolutely. I certainly I don't that. know it all, but I earned all of these gray hairs um, <laughs> by doing the wrong things and learning from those mistakes. Learn, yeah, you got them. You earned them the hard way. Hey, let's do this to wrap up. You know, the, the economy, especially restaurants, have been hit really hard right now. So who do, let's give a shout out and we'll tag them when we post this. Who do you love to go get lunch or dinner with nearby? We'll tag the restaurant and give them a little shout out, a little love. Actually, I've got a friend of mine that owns a Mexican restaurant called El Gallo in El Gallo. Fair Oaks. Yeah, E-L-D-A-L-L-O, um, Jose there. And it's a great restaurant, but he's struggling, you know, yeah. with patio dining and takeout. Um, locally here, there's a couple of good ones. Uh, the names just slipped my mind, though. That's I, all right. I got COVID in early December. Yeah. And so... Uh, just having a little bit harder time picking up stuff quick. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, dang, that's in that's that's intense. Well, yeah. well, we'll definitely ping uh, Jose at El Gallo and uh, and uh, encourage everybody out there if you're nearby to go get some uh, tacos or carne asada with him. Perfect, love it. Hey, Rick, thanks for joining us for the podcast. I hope you have an awesome 2021. And I uh, hope people that uh, listened in here, I know people who listened in got some valuable tidbits and some diamonds in there. If I had to summarize them, I'd say definitely develop relationships and uh, boundaries with your clients and develop real clear pathways of expectation between your broker and your, and your uh, agent if you are looking to develop and, and make it mutual, right? That's another huge thing I heard you right. say is... Don't think you're above your mortgage broker if you're an agent or the other way around. It's really easy to say, they're the idiot. No, they're the idiot. Get together, work it out, and make it work. That's it. Yep. Awesome. Thank you, Nathan. I appreciate the time. Appreciate yeah. being on. Absolutely. Have Thanks, Rick. Day. Have a good one. Okay. God bless.